Thank you, Nancy. Second quarter really did the Nets in tonight. The game got away from them. Indiana certainly found a flow offensively. Nets couldn't make a basket, and defensively, it was a struggle for Kenny Atkinson's squad after the first quarter. First quarter was no victory for Brooklyn by any stretch. They were struggling offensively, but the carryover was rough. And I think what you anticipate from this Indiana Pacers team is the toughness of their defense, the physicality they bring. You know it may be a challenge finding ways to score against them, which was something that the Nets did deal with, but more than anything, it was what happened on the other end of the floor yeah. for the Nets. And with a Pacers team that also was missing some players from injury, yeah. as were the Nets, it was some of those complementary players that really were able to take advantage, whether it it was Aaron Holiday, Justin Holiday. You have Nas Long coming off the bench. So you might expect that it's hard to contain guys like DeMontis Sabonis or Miles Turner, but it's some of those other players that really did a lot of damage, particularly damage on their offensive glass, getting some second chance opportunities, extra possessions to help keep their offense going. Saturday night, uh, it was a circle the wagons kind of scenario for Brooklyn. No Kyrie Irving, Joe Harris stepped forward, Spencer Dinwiddie took over in the fourth quarter. Same mentality tonight because Irving was sitting this one out with that shoulder impingement, but not the same reaction from the Nets. Well, 30 assists against that Chicago team, just 18 tonight yep. here for the Nets. And Spencer Dinwiddie, of course, had that big game in Chicago. He was really the only one that was able to manufacture a lot of offense. And, and you bring up the fourth, first quarter, even from the get-go for the Nets, they had found ways to get quality shots. They just weren't going down. Yep. And I think that was a lot of it early on, not seeing the ball go through the hoop. And, and we didn't see the same type of ball movement, some of the energy, the execution, and, and whether it was small bits, small stretches where they would start to make a run. It was just too big of a hole that they had to deal with after that second quarter. Charlotte coming to town on Wednesday night. This is a team that not many people expected much from this season. They played really hard. They found some chemistry. Devontae Graham has stepped forward, and maybe they're getting some offense from unexpected places. Uh, Charlotte, certainly not a pushover for Brooklyn right now. Nobody's a pushover. For the Nets. And that's the mentality you have to bring in. And, and I think even James Borrego now in his second season ahead of the Charlotte Hornets is able to get them playing in the ways that they yeah. want to. And, and for this Nets team, it comes back to the drawing board, the things that they need to correct. And I think a lot of those things came to light again, whether it was some of those unforced turnovers, whether it was making sure to take advantage of, you know, the things that they can do well on both ends of the floor offensively, defensively, but that connectivity. And, and some of that comes with missing key players, but more more than anything, just understanding what it takes to get the job done in terms of the energy level, the intensity, and making sure your compete matches that of the opponent. Nets coming off a five-game road trip. They lose the first game back here at home as Indiana runs away with this one.